Are you looking for the most performance from your CPU for gaming and you've always wondered about these technologies known as hyper-threading or in AMD's case, SMTs, simultaneous multi-threading. What these technologies do is essentially grab one of those physical cores on your CPU and then split it into usually two virtual threads. This allows the core to then be saturated more and ultimately leads to more performance out of your current CPU. However, in today's video, we are going to go against conventional wisdom and turn off these technologies, essentially reducing in the case of the 7800X3D from 16 threads down to eight threads. And then in the case of the 14700KF, we're gonna be taking this CPU down to 16 threads and then down to eight threads because we're gonna be doing three tests for this CPU. And that is also turning off the E cores and seeing how that performs. So let's get on with this comparison in today's video and see what the results present right after today's video sponsor. If you wanna get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City and let's get straight into these results here where in today's video we are testing with different memory configurations. One which is I found best in the benchmarks for AMD 6200 megahertz and then on the Intel side the one which I found is the best balance between stability and performance and that's 7200 megahertz DDR5. Then for the graphics card we're using an RTX 4090 on both systems and we are going to now test the first game here which is Horizon Zero Dawn. And what we saw here was simultaneous multi-threading off on the 7800X3D is that we actually gained a little bit of performance here and the 0.1% lows also copped a gain as well. And then moving on to the Intel side of things this was a similar scenario. We did gain FPS with everything turned off, the E cores and the hyper threading. But then when the hyper threading came back on, we then did a little bit better than when we did with the original default configuration. Though continuing on with Hogwarts Legacy for the 7800X3D, that scored again another boost in FPS to the tune of around 5%. And then on the Intel side, this actually scored quite somewhat of a big boost as well with the hyper threading off and the E cores off. But then with just the E cores off, we saw no gain really at all. Then moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, here was where for the Intel scenario, the CPU actually lost performance on this everything off scenario. And then with the hyper threading on and the E cores off, it actually scored the best results. Moving on to AMD's Ryzen 7, we saw virtually a tie here, but I will note the 0.1% lows were actually worse in this particular title with the multi-threading turned off. Moving through to Baldur's Gate 3, we'll start off with the Ryzen 7, and here is where we saw virtually a tie again. And just like Cyberpunk, the 0.1% lows were actually better with the hyper-threading turned on. Then moving along to Intel side of things, just like the Cyberpunk results, again, we saw a similar scenario where the best performing situation was the hyper-threading turned on and the E cores disabled. Though at this point in the video, you might think, yeah, Intel, just leave the hyper threading on, turn off the E cores, and with the AMD, just don't touch it at all. But here is the last title, Counter-Strike 2. And here is where we saw the most interesting result yet, because with Counter-Strike 2 on the Ryzen 7 7800X3D, we saw the average FPS was very similar, but the 0.1% lows, and I've been benchmarking this game over the last week quite a lot, I haven't seen 0.1% lows this high with the SMT disabled. This was actually incredible for the numbers to be this high on the 7800X3D. So if you're a professional CS2 player and you wanna get the best 0.1% loads, you may wish to disable, if you're on an AMD CPU at the very least, may wish to look into disabling this technology if that's the only game you play and you wanna play for money and tournaments because those 0.1% loads are arguably more important at this level than those average FPSs being well above 500. However, on the Intel side of things, we saw a significant boost with the hyper-threading enabled, E cores off, and also hyper-threading off, E cores off. So the Intel side of things, it showed a pretty clear cut decision here. And that was, if you're gaming, you may wish to disable E cores and leave your hyper-threading on. But when we go over to the AMD side of things, depending on the title you're playing, you may just see some very interesting results. 
by turning off SMT, especially if you're playing online competitive multiplayer titles. Though moving through the power consumption numbers, here's where at 1080p low settings, I tested this on Horizon Zero Dawn, and there was a quite a big difference in power consumption between even the i7-14700K and the 7800X 3D, but also when you turn off hyper-threading, and you turn off the e-cores, you get the best results. But then if you turn off the e-cores, you also get a pretty similar result to having the hyper-threading and the e-cores disabled. So in other words, having those e-cores on is just wasting power while you're playing games on the Intel side of things. And then on the AMD side, it didn't make such of a big difference in games because the CPU is not being fully saturated. But that being said, moving on to things like Cinebench, if you decide to turn off some of these things, like on the Intel side, the e-cores, and then the hyper-threading, your performance will scale down in its max theoretical performance. And then on the AMD side, you will, again, if you turn off the SMT, you're going to lose performance here too. But again, it comes back to what are you doing as an end user? And coming into this video, I was very skeptical of turning these things off. But definitely on the Intel side of things going forward, if I'm using a 14th gen CPU for myself, I'm going to be disabling those equals. I think having those benefits of a, just a smoother, better gaming experience, as well as lower power consumption for doing something that's so easy to do on the BIOS is definitely worth it. Then when it comes to the 7800X 3D, I will definitely just leave it in its original state because I'm not playing for money in any of these games that I play. I do play competitively, but it's not for tournaments or it's nothing serious. It's just for more personal enjoyment. And the difference of 150.1% low versus 250, for example, on a 185 Hertz monitor, it's really <laughs> not going to affect me a whole lot. Though in saying that, someone on a 500 Hertz monitor playing for the tournament of their life could be a different result. So there's a lesson in that, always do what's best for you. These numbers are here just as a guide to help you make the best choice for you. Though the final kettle to grab hold of, get the boiling water and pour a hot cup of tea with, is the 1440p results. And here is where we'll go through these very quickly with Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, Cyberpunk 2077, Baldur's Gate 3 and Counter-Strike 2. We're seeing here with the ultra or very high settings, you're not getting much of a difference between any of these scenarios because that's the, the GPU starting to cop out and take a lot of the brunt more than the CPU. And of course, the FPS is a lot lower than it was at 1080p low settings. So if you're playing on more of an eye candy setting and you're at 1440p or especially 4K, then you really don't have to worry a whole lot. But me personally, I would still disable the e-cores just for that power saving advantage. And on top of that, I would even further go ahead and uh, tune the Intel CPUs for uh, maximizing the power efficiency. The 7800X 3D, that's pretty much a locked CPU. So you can't really do a whole lot with that beside 20 millivolt or 30 millivolt with a curve optimizer in the BIOS. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on maybe tuning both these CPUs, I can definitely get that out, but it's going to be minimal differences really on the 7800X 3D versus the Intel where you can actually tune that thing up and get it running a lot better in its uh, current state. But also disabling the e-cores is something that I would definitely do coming out of this video. Even at higher resolutions and lower FPS, I'm still going to be doing that going forward, especially if an Intel CPU is on my benchmark rig and we're testing performance. And thank you guys a lot as well for recommending that I do turn off the e-cores and do these tests because there was a noticeable difference. It was actually a difference that can be had and it's a more efficient difference too. And personally, I just don't take advantage of e-cores. Though of course, going back to you doing you, if you do utilize those e-cores and you do take advantage of them more than you can gain from gaming, you do you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. Also, let us know in the comment section below what you think of these results. Have you turned off hyper-threading or SMT or e-cores yourself? What are your thoughts and opinions? Love reading them as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon, but pretty much summing this one up, can be worth it. Just check out the results and do what's best in your scenario. With that said, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.